How's it going? Hey, welcome back to the Great Green Earth. Today we're going to be talking about spring fertilizers and everything you need to know about spring fertilizers. It's We've hit that window pretty much anywhere in the GTA. It's time for you to put down your spring fertilizer or your spring pre-emergent, both of them. So without further ado, let's get straight into the video. We're going to be talking to everything about spring fertilizers and then I might actually show you guys some clips from my first mow heading out of here. So first of all, this is the all-purpose fertilizer that I put down. Here's the results about a week later. As you can see, amazing. Now this is a quick acting fertilizer so all of the nutrients have pretty much been consumed here probably in about 14 days so this fertilizer is pretty much done its course however if you're following my fertilizer plan throughout this year that's no problem that the fertilizer has finished its course we're going to have plenty of fertilizer coming up here in may and june to really push the lawn going into summer and then we're really going to be pushing it again in the fall i like to push in spring and fall to really help get your lawn thick and healthy to get through the two times the stress in cool season turf, which is winter and summer. So first of all, let's talk about how to know when it's time to put down your spring fertilizer. First of all, you're gonna be waiting until you actually see the lawn actively growing. So this was about last week for me, I can show some pictures here. You're starting to see that green come into the grass. You're starting to see the plant grow again. This is when, well, this is the easiest way to tell it's time to put down your spring fertilizer because the lawn is actively growing. It's time to push it into where you can get your first mow and keep in mind if you put down your spring fertilizer in about a week you should be mowing and that's exactly what happened this year even though it was super early it was only early april when i put down my spring fertilizer in about a week i was mowing this backyard as you can see from up here too the color looks awesome and it's just going to get better from here so the second way to tell when it's time to put down fertilizers get a regular meat thermometer like this you can put it in the grass and take your reading here I have a reading of 54, 53.9 degrees Celsius. So obviously this reading is going to change as air temperatures change. Soil temperatures don't vary as much as air temperatures, but you just want to be above 50. That's going to tell you that the grass is actively growing. And for those of you putting down a pre-emergent this year, corn gluten pre-emergent, you also need to wait till it's above 50. That's going to tell you when the weeds are start growing. Now, keep in mind, pre-emergents don't stop broadleaf weeds like dandelions and other things like that. They're only gonna help suppress uh, larger weeds like crabgrass and other things like that, more grassy type weeds. Keep in mind, if you were doing a pre-emergent program this year, do not, you cannot seed in the spring with your pre-emergent program at the same time. So what I would say for those of you looking at pre-emergents is if your lawn is more than 30% grass, go ahead, hit it with the pre-emergent, and then on top of that, you can push it with fertilizer. If your lawn is less than 30% grass, then you can focus on a spring seeding project. And I have lots of videos about spring seeding on my channel. So once you've hit that 50 degree threshold and you've been sitting out there for a couple days, we've been sitting at 50 for probably about a week now, then you can, you know it's time you've hit your threshold and it's time to go put your fertilizer, your spring fertilizer down in your lawn. So now that you know when to put down your spring fertilizer, let's go talk about what is in fertilizer and what type of fertilizer you should be putting down. Okay, so here's a bag of fertilizer. This is not the fertilizer that I decided to use in my backyard, but this is a bag of fertilizer that I use mostly. Let's talk about what these three big numbers mean. And this is what Scott's doesn't explain to you. In fact, for those of you who are used to using Scott's, you're not used to seeing this type of thing. Normally these three big numbers are hidden down here in the bottom corner. And it says some like big spring, fall, helps the lawn grow or something like that. Make some bold claims. For those of you who are definitely trying to strengthen your lawn and have the best lawn in the block, I suggest using uh, more off-brand, not Scott's fertilizers like this. The Scott stuff is fine, but I prefer this a little bit better. Um, you can buy this. I bought this from my local Pavely Mart. You can buy it from your local TSC store, is what it used to be called. Anything like that, local farm supply stores sell lots of fertilizer like this, and most of the time they're actually cheaper than the Scott stuff. These are your N, your P, and your K. This first number represents your nitrogen. This equals into basically overall leafy growth. So you put a lot of nitrogen down, you're gonna get a lot of top growth. However, you can't put too much nitrogen down or you're gonna burn. I would not put any more than one pound of nitrogen down in one fertilizer application. This next number, this middle number, is your P, which is your phosphorus and uh, this number is pretty much banned here in Canada. Uh, most regular fertilizers don't allow you to have phosphorus. Phosphorus helps with overall root growth. Um, and that root growth is really good for if you had a newly seeded lawn, if you are putting down a lot of starter fertilizers, they normally have a lot of that number in it. And then this final number 
is your K. This is your potassium. This is normally seen through potash in most fertilizers up here because we have a lot of potash mines out in Saskatchewan. And uh, what we're seeing with this number is it's normally lower than nitrogen. This number helps with basically helping the lawn uh, heal. So after a time of stress, winter or summer, disease, uh, struggle with insects, this number is gonna help the lawn heal and repair itself. So if you keep, if you continue to put down a lot of that, of one type of fertilizer like that one, when you take a soil test, you're gonna realize that you have a lot of nitrogen because that's the 30, uh, for example, and then your zero, your, uh, your uh, P, is going to be zero because you don't ever put any of that down and then your uh your k is going to be kind of in the middle because you put less of that down so this is why you want to kind of balance out your fertilizer program and make sure you're not putting down the same fertilizer all the time because you want to have balanced of those three major nutrients so when we're looking for balance between these the best thing to do in spring or for those of you, I got a comment the other day, someone saying that they hadn't touched their lawn in over 10 years. The best thing to do when you're looking at someone like that is to put down an all-purpose fertilizer. So this is a 10-10-10 or a 16 16 16 These fertilizers pretty much have equal all across the board. There's not a lot of slow release in them, so they'll give us a nice punch of kind of every major nutrient that your lawn should need. And this fertilizer kind of gives you a nice baseline, especially in the spring. Uh, going in or something that hasn't been touched in a really long time. It gives you a nice baseline knowing that you've hit all four of those main kind of food groups very easily and now you can move on trying to uh, hopefully push the nitrogen. Maybe if you're in a time of stress, you can push the, uh, the, the potassium and then maybe if you're newly seeding, you can push your uh, phosphorus and then you know maybe if you're trying to get a darker green color, you push with that iron or that magnesium. That's kind of what you're looking at here with the all-purpose fertilizer. You're getting a good baseline for everything. And as you saw in my backyard, that's what I did this year. I put down an all-purpose fertilizer. I put down a 16, 16, 16, link in the description down below. I bought it from my local TSC store and the results proved themselves. This is probably the fastest green up I've had from a fertilizer in quite a few years. And that's because it fed everything evenly. And I also put it down pretty heavy. So let's show you guys now now that you understand how fertilizer works, what it is, what you need to buy, I would definitely suggest for most of you, a lot of you are probably beginners, so you're gonna be looking at putting down that baseline, that 16, 16, 16. And for even for those of you who aren't beginners, definitely, it's never bad to go back to your roots and just start putting down those simple all-purpose fertilizers. Uh, they really kind of help even everything out, give you a good start, give you a good baseline for the rest of the year. So I would definitely suggest majority of you Living in the Southern Ontario area, we had a really bad winter this year, so it's time to get a good baseline. Put down that all-purpose fertilizer. It's really gonna help everything work really good this spring. So now that you know what fertilizer is, how it works, what fertilizers you should buy, next let's talk about how to put it down. So this is my Scott spreader, but before we actually get to the spreader, Let's talk about some of the terminology that people use and how that translates to the fertilizer bag. So you're gonna hear me say a lot of times, get that fertilizer, put it down at three pounds per thousand or put it down at five pounds per thousand. Or if you're overseeding, put it down at seven to 12 pounds per thousand. Is there a ghost in here? What those numbers mean is you want to put down the nutrients at that rate. So let me show you how that translates to the bag. So I didn't say before when I was talking about these numbers is these numbers equal percentages. This means that 30% of this bag is nitrogen. This means that 8% of this bag is potassium. So that's the way that this works when it says it's a 3008. So when I say put it down at three pounds per thousand, what we're going to do is we're gonna times this number 30 by three, which means we're getting 0.75 pounds of nitrogen down on the lawn. So that's why I said don't ever exceed a full pound of nitrogen. When I do fertilizer, most of the time I try to put down three quarter pound of nitrogen. So with this 30, I was looking at probably put this down at three pounds per thousand. However, with my 16, 16, 16, I put that down at four pounds per thousand because 16 times four is about closer, close-ish to 70. The next thing you need to know is how big this bag is. So this is a 25 kilogram bag, 
which also which equals 50 pounds. So once we figure out that, we need to go figure out how big my backyard is. So you can pace this out, just simply walk through your backyard, take paces, and then times the paces that it takes by three. Every step is about three feet. This is how you're gonna figure out the total square footage of your backyard. I know that my backyard is about 20,000 square feet. So now, when I go to put down that fertilizer at three pounds per thousand, I know that I'm gonna need 20 times three, because it's 20,000 square feet. I wanna put it down at three pounds per thousand. So 20 times three means I need 60 pounds of fertilizer to do my backyard. So I know that I need about one and a bit of bag, of a, of a bag to do my backyard in fertilizer. So you're probably wondering, how does this translate to the spreader? Now, luckily, we've had people who have calculated these application rates for us. So, the lawn care nut calculated that at his walking speed, and I've kind of calculated that at my walking speed, uh, an application at three pounds per thousand is about a 5.25. So, if you have any Scott spreader, set it to about a 5.25 and then you're good to do your application. You should be putting it down at about three pounds per thousand. Now remember, these spreaders are not an exact science. As you can see, there's lots of stuff in this rope that doesn't make anything. They're plastic, they're cheap. These spreaders are not going to give you a pretty accurate measurement of what you're putting down, but they're pretty close, that's what I can say. They're pretty close. Now this fertilizer also has what I like to call the edge guard. So if you turn the edge guard on, uh, it brings out this little orange thing here, which basically stops the fertilizer from going out this side and it pushes it all to the other side. This is good for your domination line going up and down between your house or your neighbors to make sure that you get that nice strip when your grass is greener than your neighbors or when you're trying to make sure that you don't throw fertilizer into your garden beds. If you have fertilizer sensitive plants, you can turn that on and keep the fertilizer out of the garden beds. So what I would suggest doing is you're gonna take this bag, you're gonna dump the whole thing in here, you're gonna set it to that, to the, to the 5.25 and you're gonna go. But as you're going, you're gonna keep in mind, okay, so I say I'm putting down, I need an, I say I know that my an entire bag covers my whole yard. Well, once I'm halfway through my yard, I should have half a bag left. Once I'm three quarters of the way through my yard, I should only have a quarter of a bag left. Keep this in mind through the whole time you're doing your application to make sure that you don't make it halfway through your yard and then you've realized that you put out an entire bag and now you've put out too much fertilizer. Don't be too scared about burning. Uh, there's a lot of like myths about burning lawns, how to burn lawns, people burning lawns super easy. I wouldn't be extremely scared about burning your lawn. However, it is possible, so keep that in mind as you're going. Most fertilizers now aren't burning, like burning, I mean, I think burning's a little bit of myth. You really have to dump down fertilizer to burn. But just be keep that in mind, be careful if it's new. It's not that hard to screw up, but you just need to be careful about it. Next thing I'm gonna, my pet peeve about people who put down fertilizers, this is not a lazy task, folks. You need to be walking, as a lawn care nut would say, put some ass into it as you're walking with that spreader. I believe the walking speed's about five kilometers per hour. That's how they expect you to be putting down that fertilizer. So as you can see in these clips of me putting down fertilizer, I ain't walking slow, folks. You need to be basically almost doing a jog as you're putting down the fertilizer. You need to be walking quick to make sure that you're slinging that fur real good and make sure that you're keeping up with the spreader itself. Next thing is how to put the fertilizer. Now, as I'm standing here and I'm pushing the, pushing the spreader, I need to mind where the fertilizer is going. It's gonna be throwing out this way and it's gonna be throwing out this way. So what I need to do is I'm gonna look back to the wheel marks where from the past when I was going up the lawn. So these are his wheel marks here. So let's say that this line in the concrete is the previous wheel mark. As I'm walking, I'm gonna be kind of looking at where the swath of fertilizer that's coming out of this side of the spreader is going. And I want that swath to be throwing back to the previous wheel mark of my previous pass. 
So that's pretty much how the first pass, you're going to pick a straight line. You're going to look off in the distance, pick a straight line, walk straight up to it. Then when you go to come back, you're going to throw back to the previous wheel mark of that pass and so on and so on and so on until you get all the way back. So this basically gives you double coverage almost, and that's going to make sure that you did not miss any areas. So let's say in the scenario where you were putting down 50 pounds or an entire 50 pound bag on your whole yard, let's say you finished your yard and you still had about half a bag left. So now what you need to keep in mind is that the one, the fertilizer spreader on your setting was either too low or you walked too fast. So keep those two things in mind next time you go to do your fertilizer application. Number two, now what you can do is go back across the lawn in the opposite direction until you've emptied out that spreader. This is not an exact science here, but you really want to make sure that if you're trying to hit that number of what the fertilizer you want to put down, you're putting it down evenly across that yard. So keep that in mind for putting the, the fertilizer down at three pounds per thousand. It's about a 5.25. When I put the fertilizer down at four pounds per thousand, the all purpose, I put it down at about a six or a bit a little 6.25. Folks, it's not an exact science. There's not exact settings for these things. Pretty much, you kind of have to go off what you think. And once you've done it a couple times, it's really easy to say, okay, well, last time when I did it, I set it to this, I'm gonna set it to that again. Or last time I did it, I set it to this and it was a little slow, I want it to speed up, I'm gonna turn it up. I want it, I want it to slow down, I'm gonna turn it down. Di all different things like that. But definitely make sure that when you're fertilizing, you're watching what's coming out of the hopper, you're keeping in mind, okay, I've put down half a bag, I should be halfway through. And you're also keeping in mind that like, okay, I'm walking fast, I'm throwing back to those previous wheel marks, I'm putting some ass into it, I'm getting a sweat. You should be tired after you fertilize your lawn, especially if you have a yard as big as mine. It basically wipes you out. You're pretty much chasing the spreader the whole time you do it. So that's it folks thank you guys for watching this episode of the great green north i hope this helps you fertilizer is one of those things where there's a lot of fear and stigma about it and that people think they need to hire professionals to do it for them because they cannot do it themselves it's not that difficult to do it yourself you just need to believe in yourself that you can do it because honestly if i can do it anybody can do it so i've seen lots of people come into the lawn care company i work on come into the golf course i work for and within a couple of hours, easily learned how to apply fertilizer. It's not that difficult of a thing. It just takes a little bit of thinking, a little bit of thought, and a little bit of math. That's all. So now you know how to apply fertilizer, what type of fertilizer you're putting down, and how much of it you're putting down. So this should be able to translate into any fertilizer application you do for the rest of your life. All you need to keep in mind now is what different types of fertilizers do I want to put down at different types of years. Now that you know what those three major nutrient groups are for, you can keep that in mind. Okay, my lawn's looking really stressed. I'm gonna put down more K. Okay, I need a lot of, I need a big push of growth here. I'm gonna put down more nitrogen. Everything like that, just keep it in mind. As I said, just don't exceed one pound in any of those categories and you should be fine. So without further ado, I hope this video helped you guys. Thank you guys for watching The Great Green North. We've had a big influx of new people here coming into the spring. So if you're new here, my name is Wayne Murray. I worked in the lawn industry for over three years and I'm here to help you get the best lawn on the block. So definitely subscribe, leave a comment down below with any questions about fertilizing, anything else. I'll be sure to answering them. Leave a comment down below if there's any different type of videos you guys wanna see here on The Great Green North. With The Great Green North, my name is Wayne Murray. Thank you guys for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe. And from the Great Green North, my name is Rick.